Hello and welcome to the 21st Century Work Life podcast, where we talk about leading remote teams, online collaboration and working in distributed organizations. This podcast is brought to you by Virtual Not Distant, where we help managers and teams transition to an office optional approach. Find out everything we do over at virtualnotdistant.com and check out our show notes and pictures of our lovely guests over on the podcast page. It's great to have you here, listeners. Let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to episode 229 of the 21st Century Work Life podcast, which today looks at how in the middle of the COVID-19 period, well, business as usual is not business as usual in remote organizations. So there's been a lot of content recently for those making the sudden shift to remote work, or more specifically to working from home. So this episode is mainly an empathy point for those who've already been working in distributed organizations, working remotely. But even if you have just been thrown into this and you've just started to listen to the show, then there's a lot here to learn from the seasoned professionals who, more than because they work remotely, they are they are experts in the act of reflection uh, constantly, not just about remote stuff, but also about Um, their own practices and who also pay great attention to the world of work and how to make it better in all sorts of ways. So the episode is full of reflections from those of us who are looking at the current knowledge worker situation with interest, also to see how we might come out the other end. So if you're already working as a remote worker, I think this episode will be of particular interest and hopefully some entertainment to you. If you're looking for some guidance on how to adapt to the new working from home situation, then I'm going to recommend uh, we have a very short episode, a bonus called Suddenly Working From Home from the 9th of March. But also I would like to recommend episode 60 of another show I'm involved with, which is called My Pocket Psych, which is all about the psychology of the workplace. So uh, we'll stick the, well, Maya, my colleague, will stick the links to these in the show notes. Um, So anyway, at uh, (laughs) at Virtual Not Distant, uh, Virtual Not Distant, where we have been advocating for an office optional approach all this time, well, at the moment there's not much option. So our main message is that the strength of remote work in more ordinary contexts is still that it is an option for those who thrive better away from the office. So what's happening at the moment, even to advocate for remote work, is not that great for us either. So I suppose that this episode is about those of us for whom, well, from the outside, because we already work remotely or from home, from the outside, it doesn't seem like things have changed much. Well, um, they have they have changed very much. Before I forget, my name is Pilar Orti. I'm the director of Virtual Not Distant, where we have lots of resources on managing remote teams, online collaboration. We have well, we have loads of uh, lots of podcast episodes. We have two podcasts. This is 21st Century Work Life. We also have Management Cafe. And you can also sign up to our newsletter there. And we have lots of blog posts too. And in thinking whether to follow our planned schedule uh, content for this podcast, I thought, well, what do I need to do to tackle my current context? Uh, and I hope that many of you are at some point getting the time to do that. And I hope that many organizations are giving the time and the space for people to realize what they need right now and to do what they need. And what I realized that I needed to do was talk to past podcast guests, people who I've already met, so it's easy to talk to them. Because to be honest, sometimes if when I bring people onto the show who I've never met before, who I've never talked to before and had any kind of interaction or even started building a relationship with, I find that difficult. So I thought, well, I'm going to try not to do much of that over the next uh, coming months. So I thought I'd uh, bring uh, some uh, people for whom it's easy to talk to, with whom I can reflect and share what I'm thinking too. So I'm delighted to bring you to uh, the show today, Marcus Vermouth, Teresa Douglas and Maya, Maya Middlemiss, who's co-host. But I thought I'd invite her to guest on the show, do something just to catch up with her in a different way to our monthly What's Going On episodes and the time we, we spend sometimes 
We also talk outside of the podcast, <laughs> uh, although our longest conversations are on the show. So um, I'd also thought I'd check in with you and share how I'm experiencing this uh, differently. Uh, so I'll start with uh, the fact that, well, as well as running Virtual Not Distant, uh, where we help people collaborate online, I also have a parallel profession as a voiceover artist, which is mainly involved going into a studio. I am not set up at home. This is just the podcast set up. Those of you who have a very good ear for audio will be able to tell that, yeah, it's okay. It's it's podcast quality, but it doesn't really work if... Um, for for broadcast and it's not I'm not set up to do voiceover work so all that work has gone at least for for now um, it's going to people with home studios that are set up who are probably set up for that and to be honest this has already been happening so this is one of the reasons I thought well I'll start st uh, stepping away from uh, the voiceover world, I cannot set up a studio in my home. I'm not going to move to a home where I can set up my studio. I love the profession because I go into somewhere. Um, ironic, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, I'd already been seeing that that was happening. So it's just happened much faster than I thought. So that is one thing that's changed. Uh, also, I have, well, some of you might know that I am the voice of uh, of uh, Suli, who's a, a really sweet cartoon character in a series called Go Jetters. We've had three seasons. You know, we, we were hoping for a fourth season, but I don't know what's going to happen now with this. Everything's been, everything's thrown up in the air in all sorts of ways. So if you have any interest at all in how that industry works, I do have a book. <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm here for a recording, The Ordinary Life of a Voiceover Artist. So if you want to be thinking about something completely different to the future of work, then check that out. So as I was saying, the only good thing is that I'd seen that that industry was going in a way that I wasn't going to be keeping up with or part of. And so I decided to move more of my work to the training and facilitation consultancy space around online teamwork. So great. So virtual, not distant. Uh, well, even that has taken a small turn just recently. Something that totally caught me by surprise. And well, as well as doing some of the work with uh, organizations in English, well, I'm just having to work in Spanish, which I hadn't thought I would be doing. Uh, yeah, those of you who've been following the show or who know me might know that I am Spanish, but I've been living in London since 1990. I went to a British school so in Madrid, so all my education and all my work-related stuff has been in English. And even though I regularly go to Spain, I never thought that there'd be a need for me to work in Spain at any point. So guess what? That need has arrived. Uh, so I'm working for Spain, but from London. Great. And so what's happened over the last few weeks, not at a massive scale, but a considerate one, is that I've had requests from Spanish companies to help them suddenly manage the current situation of everyone working from home. Uh, and what I've really liked about this, which is what I want to share with you, is that their requests haven't been, oh, can you help us now? Because we're going to do this for now and then that's it. But we just need help now. The requests are actually coming from people who are saying, can you come and help us to do this now? Because we're hoping to do this as well as we can. So that when we can, when we come out the other side, we've introduced change in the organizations. We can introduce a new way of working to people. We can upscale our people. And um, this is not about being tech savvy, uh, but well, also, but also of not being afraid of the new environment and to embrace technology to stay in touch. So we'll hear more from guests around this, not, not about Spain, but this is actually happening everywhere. But I'm really uh, heartened and I feel very privileged to be able to work with people in a country where there's traditionally been a lot of resistance to how it's called their telework, to remote work, not just from management, because there's often a culture of presenteeism, but also because there's a real social culture and a, a real appetite for seeing each other a lot. Um, and there's other factors which which have meant that the country hasn't embraced remote work, uh, which you can hear a lot about in episode 214, The View from Southern Europe. Again, if you're interested, that's a great episode, 214. So um, it, it, I feel a real privilege to help those who think that this actually, that it was about time. 
And some of the stuff I'm hearing there, it's one that it's been, it's led to a lot of meetings because a lot of companies, that's how decisions are made, how people collaborate is by spending lots of time together. That's being transferred to the online space. And of course, um, they're thinking, well, we can't, this is not sustainable. We have to find other ways of working online that doesn't involve everyone being in a meeting. So Anyway, that is, uh, that's been an interesting development at my end. Uh, something else that has changed is I am set up to work at home in my lounge in a corner. <laughs> but I now, of course, have to share that corner with uh, my husband. Although yesterday we did go and pick up finally um, the monitor and a chair from my co-working space. Because that's another space I use. So I'm not home all the time. And of course, I also heavily used my, um, my health club, which has some exercise classes which break up my day. So all of that has changed, you know, in the same way that it's changed for for all of you. One thing that hasn't changed is that it's still wonderful to be working alongside Maya and Ross for the show uh, and and on the company. And lovely too, to also have a point of connection with Brie Kajati and Tim Burgess from Shield Geo, who are leading the series every other week on connection and disconnection in remote teams. Which, as Maya said to me the other day, well, it couldn't be more timely, but also it couldn't be more evergreen. So it's nice to have a, a something that is now appealing to to people who otherwise wouldn't be even listening to it. But um, I recommend that you listen to that if you're not doing so already. So enough about me. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this space. I hope that it helps in some way either to entertain you, give you a different perspective, give you a similar perspective. So let's talk about our guests. I'm talking to Marcus Vermouth, who is the engineer. He's an engineer manager at Buffer, which is a distributed organization with more than 200 people. And I wanted to see how things have changed for him. Um, we've had many conversations on the show before, and I was uh, I was curious. After that, you will hear Teresa Douglas, who is the author of the book Working Remotely, Secrets to Success for Employees in Distributed Teams. And finally, well, I wanted to talk to Maya uh, to see how things have changed for her beside the work that she does at Virtual Not Distant. And also she is a really seasoned home uh, home worker, and she's also a freelancer. So I thought it'd be interesting um, to to look at that. Also, just to let you know that Maya has a novel called Beyond the Chain. So again, if you're looking for something different, then check that out and see see if you fancy it. Anyway, let's uh, start with Marcus. Well, Marcus, an impromptu conversation. I'm really glad to be talking to you over Skype today. Yes, me too. It, it's not that I could be somewhere else right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so listeners, most of you will have heard Marcus Vermouth on this show in a number of episodes, including the whole Connection and Disconnection series. But he is an engineering manager at Buffer, which is a distributed company. So Marcus, I'm going to start with a very, very broad question of how have things changed? Let's see for the company as a whole, and then we'll go more into your specific situation if it's okay. So how have things changed at Buffer with the whole COVID-19 situation? I think everyone right now is impacted across the world, which is an interesting thing that rarely happens for distributed teams where like everyone is impacted in the same way. And I think what a lot of people don't know or don't recognize is I get a lot of questions lately of like, wow, this must be business as usual for you yeah. all. But it actually is not. Like as everyone else is starting to work from home right now, it's not remote work. It's like emergency work, right? And that's the same for us. It's not that for us, everything is continuing as normal. I mean, we're more used to working from home and we have everything set up for that, but it's still a big impact to the whole of the team. Like, for example, on my team, there's someone that, you know, has three kids at home and doesn't have an office. And how are you going to ask work from him right now in this situation, you know? So I think to to give you one sentence of how the impact has been, is like productivity is much lower than usual. So I think that's probably the biggest impact looking at like the people in the company. Yeah. And I really like what you're saying. Okay. That person, they're just, it's very difficult to ask for work from them at the moment. So what kind of conversations are you having in your team to I don't know. What, what, so, yeah, what kind of conversations are you having? I'll, I'll leave it open. Yeah, I mean, we, we're still continuing. Our team, like last week, released a new product, a new application. So we're still continuing as normal. But, 
of course, like the expectations from me and even from everyone else are kind of dialed down to like a minimum, right? Um, the person, you know, that has three kids in office, like I told him, like, if you have to work from home, if you can work an hour a day, like, you know, that's okay. Like just give what you can or what you want to give in a sense that like no one can change the situation right now. So the conversations I've been having are all around empathy, checking in and just re-emphasizing with every message, with every update I send of like, listen, people, family first, do take care of everything, right? And then, you know, we'll we'll follow up with all this work stuff here. That's such an important thing to say. If you can work one hour, that's great. Because as you say, I'm also getting this sense of because people have traditionally been able to be very productive when working from home, that means that that can happen now. Although there is a lot of uh, empathy and care in some of the transitions, but I'm hearing almost an urgency to get going and back to business as usual. And this worries me. <laughs> I can see the point of like businesses fearing, you know, a little of losses because the economy is quite impacted. Yes. So I can understand that. But I think with that message, there needs to be even at the same time, a message of empathy too, because the people that never worked remotely and that are now forced to work from home with all their kids at home, with everything shut down, with having to plan for meals, with having to, you know, buy groceries only at certain times, with maybe even family members they have to take care of or that are actually sick. You know, like there's so many things that that come into play here that remote work is the least, the least of their problems. So I understand that people want to work because it can also be a good distraction. You know, some some people might happily want to work and dive into stuff right now, which I can also see. But I think the, the most important thing here is empathy, whether that's for the business, for the individual that wants to work or for the individual that can't work. Where right now we all just are humans that, you know, are suffering one way or the other. So yeah. And also it's, it's also a process. I think uh, many of us are still in shock uh the the way that uh, of course like you're saying it's not just about where we need to be working it's a whole context also we might be in shock about ourselves also i know that i've had to i don't know really think what do i feel about this what do i think about this what should i say or not say about this so i think maybe we're still some countries more than others a bit in shock uh, and this is going to just take so long to even know what it is that we should be doing Totally. I mean, there's still some people out there that think next week it will be over, but, um, you know, having connections to Italy, I know, and even looking at China, this took three months that, you know, they're starting to loosen things up. And for us, it's just, you know, in not in the middle, but right, right there. Right. So it's not, a, I always struggle also to say it's a new normal for now it is, but I mean, there will definitely be changes that will come out of this with different different habits and different approaches. So it's not just a one-week experiment. It's kind of a longer thing. So that's why I think we should all look at it, you know, with like a more settled and a more long-term eye than just let's fix it for now kind of thing. And so at a company level or, or in your team, have you changed any of your communication patterns, habits? Is there anything specific that you can say now? Well, actually, we used to do this, but now we've adopted this other thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we change things, but we have more additional things. So uh -huh. two, two fun things to share. Well, one fun <laughs> thing to share, the other one not so fun, but we have two new channels that are getting heavily used in Slack that got, got created just last week. One is called COVID-19, where people just share, you know, their thoughts and kind of it's an outlet for people for this whole crisis. And the other one is a meme channel. We all know memes, right? The funny pictures, the funny videos. And I have to say, it's almost the most active Slack channel since last week. Not because we all just want to post funny pictures, but it's also kind of a light in the mood kind of thing, right? It just helps to just share, you know, all the people that are starting to work remotely and share funny videos or share funny pictures. So it's, it's, it's a, um, it's helping with the mood, right? So this is just two tiny things that, of course, they are like very, very small nuances. The other thing that I noticed, and that's also advice I, I gave and would give to people that are starting to work remotely, is I myself and also others are jumping more into video calls because, of course, you know, people are alone at home or maybe just with their partner or, um, yeah, I think there's 
probably a lot of people alone at home, right? And feeling lonely. So having this connection, you know, even last week I jumped into a gathering call where a couple of people in the US gathered and it was at 10 my time, which I normally wouldn't do because it's like outside work time, but it was a casual hangout. So that's, I think, a bigger shift that I don't think that's necessarily necessary thing that I'll keep doing, but for this time being, it's very helpful to, you know, have the human connection and do more synchronous communication. And I think one thing that is going to come out of this that is already coming out is uh, people are hopping onto video for connecting with others mm -hmm. informally in all sorts of ways. It's amazing, you know, and people are giving like Zumba classes online and stuff like that. Yes. And I think... When when I speak to people about the concepts of virtual coffees, which uh, are so common to companies like Buffer and other distributed companies, and it, it, it's always been a revelation, I think we're not even going to have to talk about that anymore. Because that is one thing, is that the, the technology is being embraced as a way of connecting at a human level in, in ways that people had never thought was possible. Yeah, 100%. I mean, just... An example that happened, I don't know, it was last week or the week before, my sister-in-law in Italy finished her medicine degree and that university never did online courses, but she um, did her presentation to gain, you know, her, her final exam and to, to become a doctor online from like day one, you know, like to the other, they just did it online. So I think right now, as you said, there's a change happening where The initial thought of remote work, working from home or working virtually, maybe that's a better expression. Um, we don't have to advocate for that anymore. We don't have to talk about, hey, let's you know use video calls. I think people now under understand or understood the value of that. So I think this is kind of the next next level of things where now it gets a bit deeper and people understand that, okay, technology is here for a reason. Video calls are here. They're actually very, very helpful, you know, for various reasons, for dance classes, for kids, school classes, for even church sessions or whatever, you know, like everything can be done in that way somehow. And something else I wanted to pick up with is, uh, and something that I'm struggling as someone who puts out content is this um, this parallel having a place for people to express this, their concerns. You mentioned the Slack channel for that, and also having a space for people to lighten the mood and and not have to think about that all the time. Yes, and that's quite interesting. Also, I imagine as a, I could imagine as a company and as a manager also to keep that balance. Yeah, you have to make space and you have to, of course, in your one-on-ones, you know, when you connect with your direct reports or with other persons, um, understand what they want. There's some people, they really want to know everything. They want to dig in, they want to understand this, and they want to talk with you about that. There's others that they want to talk about it, but then they don't, you know, they, they don't want to go on Twitter every day and just see all the news. They just, you know, they're fine with not seeing everything. So Again, empathy, <laughs> word of the day, I think here, but to just, you know, not everyone is in the COVID channel, not everyone is in the meme channel. So I think you have to find a balance and that balance is basically every, every person is different and has to embrace what, you know, they feel like right now. A friend of mine uh, has opened up a Slack just for her friends, which I think is great. It's a bit like when Lisette and I started Virtual Team Talk. We just brought our contacts together. And uh, she had a really lovely channel, Cheered Me Up Today. Mm. Uh, and I really like that. Also, it reminds you that there are still small things, that obviously there are small things and that it's worth sharing those small things. And also to be looking out for those small things. So I, I really like that channel. Yeah, totally. I mean, even in my free time at home, because I'm at the moment alone, um, I can't watch any post-apocalyptic movies. I have to watch comedies right now, <laughs> yes. you know, to lighten the mood. I can't. I, I, it's not possible. <laughs> yes. So uh, you were mentioning, so your, your, your personal situation, because as you say, this is all about context and understanding the person and seeing what might work for us right now and what we need. So where are you, Marcus, and what is happening around you and how has your context changed? Yeah, so not too much. My routine didn't change. Problem is <laughs> my wife and I are quite separated like physically right now because she's still in Italy because of her work and her, her internship she was doing there. She's from there, so she has family, so it's not a big, big issue. But of course, we can't move right now. There's no trains, yeah. there's no planes. <laughs> the country in the middle is closed, you know, so 
that is a big change, although video helps there, you know, to, of course, connect. We've been used to that for a while already, so it's not too new. Um, for me, the biggest change is just that I'm alone and this quarantine staying at home is giving me a lot, a lot of time to reflect on myself and to think about things and to, yeah, I don't know, go deeper also in, in some feelings and see what, what's going on with me, right? And that ultimately also helps me then to understand others and help to make others feel safe. Like I've been chatting to almost all the and other engineering managers at Buffer every morning, like, hey, how are you doing? Because I don't have kids. So my current context is still quite okay, right? So I'll offer help. I'll be there, you know, because I can in that sense and um, just be there for others. I was thinking today in a walk in the park that uh, also, even though this is very unprecedented, there could be in the future other times when this kind of thing happens. So, for example, I don't know, uh, a, a building catches fire overnight and we don't have an office to go mm -hmm. back to. Or, you know, the, very uh, specific things. So, so it's interesting to... Going through this now, I was just trying to think of, of what 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 might happen in the future that is similar. I don't know. I don't know why I was thinking that, Marcus. <laughs> no, no. I, I I think it's a good point though because I think basically every company, every company, be it um, the coffee shop or the grocery shop or you know a digital business, they are all starting to have an emergency plan from this going forward. I think because you know I know this is unprecedented and probably likely won't hopefully happen very yeah. soon again but whatever will happen whether you know that's i don't know the office is closed for various reasons or other things that people will say oh okay cool we can fall back to this now so i th think that that's not a not a weird thought that you had there in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> so talking of thoughts, is there anything that you want to share with me and listeners about some of the stuff that you've been reflecting in or what you are doing with those reflections? So I don't know. I think the biggest thing I'm reflecting on and similar to you, I know maybe this will be boring, but is that, yeah, a lot of people think this is remote work. Even just yesterday I wrote with a friend who first time working from home in the UK is like, oh, this is cool. You know, like for you, it must be business as usual. And for me, it's like, you're not really understanding what's going on here, um, that this is not business as usual. So I think that's kind of a lot of my reflections when I'm thinking about this whole situation and just trying to spread the right message, if that makes sense. And, and the best way of doing that also, because I can find myself being... Not not empathetic, actually. <laughs> I do have to turn my empathy uh, 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 switch on even more because I'm thinking, well, this is not how it is. I don't want you to think that this is how it is. I don't want you to think that this is what I do. Uh, but at the same time, people are just looking at people who are just that little bit step ahead and that have experienced it in a different context, of course. And it's um, it's bringing up lots of questions also around I'm not not even in the global uh, scale, but just at, at at the work and you know all this uh, future of work conversation is, I'm I'm already it's good I'm already hearing some organizations saying well actually we want to think about this and see what we can learn from it so we can then implement it when we come up the other end. Yeah. But on the other hand, I'm also hearing conversations of um, well, is this going to be something that is expected of people? regardless of whether that's what they want to work at home. That's true. I mean, there's a whole big conversation going to happen after, you know, so the crisis is averted a little bit. So I'm, I'm very curious whether that's the economy, whether that's remote work. It's going to be definitely interesting to learn. I think we're all starting to realize how important human connections are and that we can also do that on video but you know maybe catching up with a friend you rarely talk to or this time at home i feel like there's there's a big shift going on i talked with someone yesterday on a more spiritual sense but we're kind of in this limbo state where there's a lot of bad happening and we're all at home and we all have this time to think about things so i'm very curious about that especially when it comes to you know connections and to feelings with other people and the other thing i can only recommend everyone to do is trying out meditation in this time. You know, I've been very bad at it. I've never really done it. There's like a lot of mindfulness, but r lately I've been really looking a bit more into uh, like real meditation and even just doing it in the morning, in the evening to spend 10 minutes, you know, with 
no news, no Twitter, no LinkedIn coming into you, just, just you know, sitting there and, and caring for yourself. That's, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Yeah, it's very easy to lose ourselves in the whole context and everything that's going on. And I think those moments where we can just concentrate on ourselves in whatever way, like you say, meditation, reflection, whatever it is, just stopping and being, uh, they're, they're even even more important. Good. So I don't think I can remember that thing that I was going to say that really worries me. So maybe it doesn't worry me as much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anything um, that, uh, that you, you want to add about your experience at this moment? Uh, no, I think we, we, we said probably a lot already. I think everyone should stay at home, stay safe and be kind to, uh, to your friends and also to your coworkers because this is this is an emergency. And Marcus, I hear you are uh, are you doing some coaching training at the moment? Yes, that's correct. Um some trainings get canceled now because of this, but I'm in the middle of it and um if anyone is interested, I'm still looking for a few candidates who would be up to go through this with me, so um feel free to reach out to me if you're interested. I thoroughly recommend it, uh, listeners, <laughs> having, <laughs> having these uh, private therapy sessions with I know <laughs> with Marcus. I know coach is not therapy at all. That, that was a bad joke. Uh, just to let you know, we it's the twenty fourth. 23rd, 24th of March. I don't really know anymore what day we're on. It's the 24th of March, 2020. So how long do you think this offer might be open for, Marcus? Um, today's the 25th, but no worries. Oh, we're all... oh my God, I missed a day. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Um, I, I think I have a few, lo- few slots open. It depends on, you know, if the person, if we work, we can do a quick session together that's maybe just half an hour to see if we can work together and if the person's interested so we can keep this open for two weeks or so but people can always reach out to me and um we'll we'll take it on a day-by-day basis great so uh on twitter you are at marcus wormuth or at m m wormuth yeah or you can yeah. look at my uh website marcus wormuth like my full name.com and you see all the the social details there That'll be the best one, marcusvermuth.com. Well, thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you, Pilar. Great. Well, I would like to bring back and uh, welcome back onto the show, Teresa, because we have been hearing quite a bit from you, especially in the Connection and Disconnection uh, series. So, uh, Teresa Douglas, who is the co-author of Working Remotely, Secrets to Success for Employees in Distributed Teams. And she's the People and Operations Manager at the organization where she works full time. So, how have things changed and how are they staying the same for you, Teresa, in this COVID-19 period? It's It's been interesting. I'm, I'm working full-time still. So currently my hours have not changed. Personally, I have children home now because schools closed for an undefined amount of time. And my husband, as of this week, is also working from home. So we're, we, have a, we have a full house here. And where are you based uh, geographically? I'm in Vancouver, Canada. I love the internet. (laughs) It's just amazing. It's really amazing. Tell us a little bit about the setup of your company so we understand what context you've been working in. And also it'd be interesting to see how things have changed there from your point of view. So my division is actually all remote, but other parts of my company have not been remote. So we're in an interesting period where... My immediate division has always worked remotely, and we're helping the other divisions transition from that. There, Many of them were based in offices in Florida and New York, and all of those folks are now working from home. So we have some people who know, know how to work in this environment and others who are currently being educated in their new reality. So very interesting that you, as someone who has been working remotely and mainly from home for a while, is helping people who haven't experienced this before. How are you coping with that? <laughs> it's been it's been an, an intense time. I, I'm going to admit that because on the one hand, I'm I'm a helper, and the way I cope with stressful situations is trying to help. So for that, it's been really good. I'm getting into Zoom meetings and showing people how to use the buttons and we're having practice sessions. And on the other, I'm also a a parent and parenting at the same time as working. Um, It's been a learning experience 
my my children are troopers. They're they're working as best they can in the new reality, but it's a time crunch. I, I work late at night. I work early in the morning. And I parent all the time. So you've had to change. Well, you've like like everyone actually. You've had to change your schedule, and have you changed to where you work from also physically? I haven't changed too much of where I work because my children are used to me working from home. So I tend to keep my office door open. I will go down and check on them. They they are now on on a very loose schedule, mm-hmm. so they have some things they have to do before they can watch screens. But I'm I'm being very relaxed with that because I just I can't homeschool at the same time that I work. So my hours are lengthened a little bit because I usually work early in the morning from 6.30 my time on. I'm taking a bigger break in the middle of the day when I used to run. I'm now hanging out with my children and we're trying to do fun things and just check in with them. On the other hand, I'm fairly lucky because they're a little bit older. They're they're just old enough that they can make their own breakfast, but young enough that they're still trying to be compliant. So no teenagers in this house. <laughs> that's a, that's a good age. That's a good age. It's great. <laughs> so you're saying you were saying that you go for a run. So um, how have you? Are you getting as much time to disconnect from work as you would like to? Well, I am not getting as much time to disconnect because it's it's just the new reality. I'm still making time as I can. So I will have a late night knitting session. You know how I love my my knitting. Yes, I was gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I, I have a toolbox of things I use. About two days ago I was just over everything and I had a, a very light and fluffy book that I'd been meaning to read that I'd saved for, for this when I realized my children were going to be home. And I just read that for a while after the kids were in bed. And there really is something very therapeutic, though, with having a dance party with my kids in the middle of the day and forgetting about everything just to be with them. And in that way, even though I do have children at home and I'm, I'm working, I feel lucky to have that as, as an excuse and an outlet. So you're starting to figure out what you need. What are you finding people need in your company, uh, maybe from you or from others around them? I find that they need permission to not be okay. That this is something that we are all working through and, and nobody is really set up to perfectly manage their homeschooling and their job and make it look like it used to where children weren't intruding very much. It's it's okay and telling people it's okay if we see your children, if you're holding a crying baby. And in other cases, that it's okay to have some social time. So I have had several happy hours. And it's really funny that my my social life has exploded in, in this time period <laughs> as people are all trying to connect. And I'm the one that knows Zoom. So I posted several of those <laughs> and and I was joking with my husband that, that I am married with children. I'm the person that stays home and doesn't go out at night, but now I can go out and stay home all at the same time. Yes. Just having that time where people can laugh about other things. That's, that's what I've been, I've been tasked to do. And within your own team who are all remote, have you... I mean, I think it's still early, but have you had time to deliberately change anything you're doing or basically you're just there supporting other people and and, and seeing and, and seeing how things happen and then adjusting? We had some really good conversations. I, I have to say from my organization, we we had some conversations before things in the States, particularly because that's where a lot of our, our work happens, really blew up before any of the the closures were happening on how we were going to work through all of this and give each other that support. So right now, uh, if people are taking some time off, which is being heavily recommended that we each take at least a day off, and then we, we have a spreadsheet where we're covering for people. So I cover for my coworker, my coworker covers for me on a different day, and we're taking just rolling time so that we can de-stress from from all of this situation. That's really important because one of the things I was thinking of is this, this black and white situation also for me. So because technology is allowing us to very quickly set up, especially at home and continue working for, mm-hmm. for the people who usually use the office. At the same time, if we didn't have technology, 
okay, maybe we would have been a bit more stressed because we couldn't carry out uh, doing business. And of course, businesses need to keep going. However, it might have also given us some space and some time. So I'm not sure. What do you think about that, that the dual thing that actually now technology means that we never can really think about whether we should be working or not? I, I have big mixed feelings about that because on the one hand, it's a privilege to still get a paycheck. Mm. And there are many people who are in a position where they can't work from home. So having that ability is good. On the other hand, boy, is it nice if if you can unplug for a while. There, there are many wonderful things happening right now to help people spend some time inside. So music concerts and different lessons people are offering for free. And I don't take part in them because I'm I'm working. And then when I'm not working, I'm with my children. So it's, I don't know, it, it's an interesting position to be in. It's, it's another balance that we have to find. Yeah, because I, as you were speaking, I was thinking that already technology has started to become part of our world, regardless of the kind of work we did and where we did it from. And now even more. So yeah, really interesting that even even with that, you're having to choose, okay, do I do something online? Do I do something with the people in my space? Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, if you are spending the whole day in at the computer because that's part of your work, do you have time to do the social in the same medium? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, good. Well, Teresa, this has been really, really, well, really insightful. Uh, because, as you know, I work in a small company, uh, so I, I really appreciate what it is, especially as a as a people supporter, <laughs> someone who is in, in 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 whose job it is to support people throughout this. Is there anything else that uh, that you've been thinking about, or anything that you've been doing or heard that you would like to 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 share with me and the listeners? I guess the thing that I, I would like to share. I recently read a, an article from Harvard Business Review called that the discomfort you're feeling is grief. And as those of us that are already remote are are working and seeing people display that grief in different ways, it's good to remember that we also have that, that just because we, we do have that paycheck that we can still work, we have to take some time, me too, in and really experience those feelings and label them and understand that we need that self-care too. So there are a lot of people that may rely on us because we have this expertise. And in some ways you have to think of yourself as a first responder and make sure that you have your own needs taken care of as well. Don't, don't forget that in the middle of this crisis. So listeners, I recommend that you follow Teresa on Twitter at Teresa M. Douglas. That's a T-E-R-E-S-A-M-D-O-U-G-L-A-S. And her website, TeresaMDouglas.com. She's got many great articles there. She will give you plenty to think about and plenty of stuff to try out too. And the title of her book again was Working Remotely, Secrets to Success for Employees in Distributed Teams. Now, our final guest for today is someone who also does a lot of writing, Maya Middlemiss. And for Maya, maybe things haven't changed as much on the professional side, but her personal life has plenty of new things in it and even her personal connection with people she's interacting with for work. So let's have a listen. Well, listeners already know Maya as as Associate of Virtual Not Distance, usually co-host once a month now. But today I just wanted to talk to you as a guest, Maya. So so how shall I introduce you? Shall I introduce you as freelance (laughs) writer and uh, CEO of BlogSparks? Um, Yes, or virtual not distant person or, (laughs) yeah. Uh, wearer of many hats, even <laughs> indoors. <laughs> yes, indoors. So just give us a little bit of context. Uh, where where are you at the moment and uh, what's happening around COVID-19? Oh, what's happening? Okay, well, I'm in Denia on the eastern coast of Spain, where I've lived for many years now. It's a, it's a small town. I think it's technically a city, but it, it is very small and it's a very seasonal resort town. Um, things here are very quiet. We've been under central government lockdown in Spain for nearly two weeks now. I just had to think about how long it was because the days have gone a little bit, bit weird like they do around Christmas and New Year. Um, but it's it's coming up to 
towards two weeks now. And we're not allowed to leave our houses unless it's for essential food, shopping or medicine or an errand like that. So things are extremely quiet. The schools are closed. Every bar, restaurant, shop selling anything other than basic essentials is closed. Most businesses are closed. Um, and things are very peaceful. So for me, it's sort of business as usual, but sort of not. So in what ways you you work from home on, and indeed you've been working from home for, is it 15 years or two decades? It's 20 years now, yeah. yeah. So um, in that sense, nothing's much has changed. And, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for the fact that this is normal for me. Um, also for my husband and the fact that we have accommodation designed for that and with enough space for two of us to work from home in privacy. Um, um, you know, we we have a large house with accommodation chosen with that in mind. And we, we also have good broadband connectivity that hasn't let us down yet because we have fibre in the street outside. I think a lot of people in Spain have been finding out just how many people their connection is actually shared with mm. now that it's being used all day at home. So things are holding together for us in that sense quite well. We've also got older daughters who are very good at sitting and staring at screens all day. Um, so I have great sympathy for anybody struggling to work around young people, maybe in a small apartment. It must be incredibly difficult. So most things haven't changed. What has changed then? Something must have changed. <laughs> well, um, obviously, we do have both girls home from school. One of them would normally be in full-time education at the moment. So she has work from school, which she's getting on with quite well on her own, um, you know, as she generally does with her homework, because it's a second language for us. Our involvement's fairly minimal anyway, and she's, she's fairly diligent. So, yeah, that's changed that they're both around. Obviously, Everybody I know is now working from home, so I've been the go-to person for helping people get set up technically and practically to do that, which I'm incredibly grateful to be able to do and to help. You know, this is an unprecedented situation and crisis. There's nothing else I can do. I'm not a nurse or medically trained or anything like that. So if I can help somebody get up on Zoom and Slack or talk to their workmates or learn how to connect to their network from home or whatever, then I'm, I'm really happy to be able to do that. But it does remind me that this is not an ideal situation for people having to work remotely for the first time. And it's not ideal in so many different ways. But so that's been a change, I suppose. It's also interesting that the tools that I use for work every day are now being used in so many new and different ways. I had a lovely <laughs> big Mother's Day Zoom at the weekend with my sister and stepsisters in the UK and my mum obviously and it, it's really nice to be able to use the tools that we use every day for business collaboration to help keep the world in touch with each other and it really does make you appreciate how much those tools have evolved now to become almost like consumer apps and that they are really straightforward for people to just get on with. And I think that's really helping to keep the world connected during this time. And uh, the other day you were saying you, <laughs> you, your, your account name in Zoom got changed because you had uh, mm. helped. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, um, my 14 year old, obviously she has collaborative projects to do with some of her school friends and they're encouraging them to get together not physically obviously but to work together on projects so I wanted to set her up on using Zoom. I was also talking to a friend who lives in the next village who's working from home with an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old and she's tearing her hair out so I was trying to set my daughter up to do some virtual babysitting for her. So that's actually working really well. She's spending, I think it's a couple hours a day with this younger girl, just helping her with her reading and her, her stories and things like that. It means my friend can work without this child continually in her face. She gets a couple of hours uninterrupted work. And it's great because for a 14 year old, getting up to speed with Zoom is very intuitive and easy. It was so intuitive and easy for her. I didn't realize that when she was using her logged in account to call me, She actually managed to change my username to say, I am Pooh. <laughs> uh, she left it like that. Um, and I only noticed just as I was going into a client call. In fact, it wasn't even a client call. It was to talk to a source for a story the following <gasps> morning. Um, so, so, okay, fine. She's she's definitely found her way around the control tools then because she I didn't even know you could change someone else's username, actually. But, but you can. 
Amazing. Um, so talking of clients well, or, or external uh, conversations, you also work, well, you work as a freelance writer and you have a, a variety, you have a wide portfolio. Has anything changed in how clients are approaching you or communicating with you or working with you or is it more or less the same? No, there's a real shift, actually. Um, it's it's interesting. I'm leaving slightly longer for each call because there's much more of a sense of connecting first. And even if it's somebody I'll probably never speak to again, they're just a source for a story. There's more of a, a decompression buffer at the beginning where we just say, how are you? Um, oh, it's nice to meet your kids or whoever's mm -hmm. running into the room and your pets. How, how are things where you are? How, how have you been affected personally? Um, and just to share that little connection. And then later on, when I send them a link or something, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, best wishes. And there's a sense of much more connectedness somehow, which is really rather unexpected and lovely. I've met more children and pets than I usually do. And after 20 years of apologizing for mine in different <laughs> circumstances, it feels a little bit like I'll never have to again. Yeah, there's so many things that I hope are going to be maintained or at mm. least acknowledged as not unusual, like sometimes some people don't mind the, the work home interference and, and it, it and it's fine when you're talking to, to, to a colleague to for your, your life to sip in very, very gradually. Um and, and also like I, you're saying Yeah, I think that's really true. Yeah, and and, and, and of course it, it's a choice, but but it's good that it's a choice so that we, we can allow that or not. And also what you were saying about the, the the decompressing at the moment at the beginning of a call, it's also this thing that even though we are on a video meeting, there is still, we are still humans. So it's fine also mm. to have a bit of that social chat at some point. Yeah, it's nice. I talk to, um, for my writing for UC Today, I talk to a lot of people in big organizations. So the, and a lot of them are not typically remote workers. So they will tend to have all that kind of social stuff going. Even ironically, a lot of them make collaboration software. They they tend to use it within big offices. So for a lot of them, actually using the tools that they create 24-7 is a little bit of a departure. So it's just really interesting how those conversations have shifted and become a lot more connected a lot more quickly, I think. And I really do hope that that will be a lasting thing. People will always have ideas about how they want to separate work and life. At the moment, everything's being thrown together. And it is stressful for a lot of people. I fully acknowledge that. But maybe the fact that we can be open about that complication and stress and and the fact that we can still get things done and we can still communicate and we can still do business, we can still write. Maybe after, once we go back to whatever normal looks like, at the end of all of this, there will be some lasting connection made there and we'll be able to carry on that more blended and location independent lifestyle. Because you're right, it's not even about the approach, it's about the fact that the conversations are being had. And I often wonder, even with Uh, people who were already working remotely, and especially those who are uh, working for hybrid organizations, so people who have an office optional where they go in two days a week or whatever, that conversation maybe has never even happened because things have yeah. just happened. And of course, why would we, of course, we want to separate this. And, uh, and also, like you say, for people to be able to say, you know, at the moment, this way of working is affecting that, uh, that balance and I want to change it. So, yeah. yeah. I think for people in hybrid organizations, it must be really interesting for anybody who's used to being the remote person in a team that's mostly co-located and they probably felt quite out on a limb and lots of the issues about hybrid teams that we talk about a lot on the show. Suddenly, they're going to be the expert in how to manage all of this stuff and life and work and bring it all together. And I think they're probably getting to know each other as a team in completely unlooked for ways. And I think we ought to find some interesting people to talk to about that when we reach the after um, and say, how was it for you and your hybrid team when all of your colleagues were suddenly remote as well? Because I think that would be really fascinating. Amazing. Yes. Good. Maya, anything that you would like to to add? Uh, it's always wonderful to <laughs> record with you because we get to talk for a while on, on one issue and go a little bit deep. Uh, anything that you want to, to, to add for myself and the listeners? I suppose the only thing to add is the thing I keep saying to the friends and family who I'm trying to help 
Um, and I think probably most listeners of this show know this already, but I'll say it again anyway. Remote work isn't usually like this. Uh, <laughs> this is not how we recommend doing it. This is not what we mean by office optional. So please, if this is your if you're experiencing it for the first time, we hope you're finding some positive aspects to it. But this isn't normal. Um, even for those of us who do it all the time, this is far from business as usual. We'd love to help you find the way to make it work for you later on. Um, but for now, we'll do all we can to help you muddle through and just keep working one way or another. Well, there you have it, listeners. If you need anything, you know where we are, virtualnotdistant.com. And do follow Maya on Twitter because she does write quite a lot of stuff, including some more personal reflections on the whole future of work, remote work uh, topics. So follow her over on Twitter at Maya Middlemiss or connect with her on LinkedIn. And that is it for this episode. I am ever so grateful to Marcus Vermouth, Teresa Douglas and Maya for agreeing to, to hop behind uh, the microphone on such short notice. Working on this episode has been particularly important for me and has brought me a lot of joy, even a little bit of normality in a way. So listeners, I am delighted that you have stayed here <laughs> so long in the episodes. You know where we are if you want to share your thoughts with us or with other listeners. We're here to provide a little bit of a forum. That's why we try to bring lots of different voices in, a little bit of a sense of connection. And sometimes we even dare to provide a little bit of guidance. So I'll point you towards our blog and our other many resources on virtualnotdistant.com. And remember that we even have two books out now, Thinking Remote, Inspiration for Leaders of Distributed Teams, which is a collection of blog posts by Maya and myself, and Online Meetings That Matter, a guide for managers of remote teams, which I finally released last month. Good timing. Uh, but it's also good for people who want to make things work in the online space. And we're currently having Thinking Remote translated into Spanish. No surprise there. We're still offering our workshops and collaborative consulting. Uh, so do check out the website. And if you want to email me directly, pilar at virtualnotdistant.com or find me on Twitter at Pilar or T. Look after yourselves. A big thank you for listening to the 21st Century Work Life podcast produced by Virtual Not Distant. If you have something to add to the conversation, let us know through the contact form over at virtualnotdistant.com. I have been your host, Pilar Orti, and I'm signing off now. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, enjoy. Enjoy.